world confusing, congested? Are you just trying to find your way? There must be a light at the end of this tunnel. Well, there's a way to find your calling, to find that job you want and deserve. When someone will come up to you and say, you're hired. Hi, I'm Steve Piazzali, a career and life coach, and welcome to Your Hire, a show about jobs and careers in which we answer questions such as, how do I find work that makes me come alive? How do I get the job I want and deserve? How do I find out about careers in marketing, architecture, smart grid technology? See how I got that in there? Well, we're going to answer those questions and many more by having on the show knowledgeable, lively guests, and we certainly have one tonight. Before I introduce her, though, I'd like to invite you to check out my website where we've added the 12 keys to getting a great job. You can sign up for my free career newsletter there, and you can find out about the career coaching I do. And essentially what I do is work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them get unstuck and build momentum towards achieving their goals faster than they would on their own. This usually saves time, money, and a whole lot of stress. To find out about that, please go to www.bayareacareercoach.com. That's www.bayareacareercoach.com. Now, we have a great guest. Christine Herzog is a professional explainer. So one of the things I'm going to do is ask her to explain what a professional explainer does. But one of the things they do is author books, and she's the author of a new book, which we'll talk about Smart Grid Dictionary, and we'll talk about careers in that space, and we'll also talk about career transitions. She went through a very interesting one herself and has brought some tips for other people. I welcome you to the show. Well, thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, great. So uh, first question is always, what do you do? And tell us your interesting path to getting here. Okay. Uh, well, I am a smart grid publisher and consultant, and my path has been uh, uh, starting off from a telecommunications background, uh, both experience and education-wise, both uh, hardware companies and then software companies, and a variety of different roles that included uh, marketing and sales and product management, consulting, partner and channel management. And as I was going through all of those different iterations of basically working in the same industry, I came to a conclusion that I felt it was time for a change and uh, looked around for what sort of a new career, uh, a new path that I could take that would really uh, provide me with that joy of working again. And mm -hmm. that's what led me to transition into the smart grid space. Well, that's really, so it was following kind of a, your own little dream path or something that you wanted to do and, and have you been able to use the skills you had before in the new Oh, absolutely. Uh, because uh, when you think about the smart grid, it really does uh, factor in quite a lot of telecommunications background into it. It's essentially a network, and it's essentially requiring a lot of communications uh, technology that's got to be added into it. So for me, it was a very natural transition, but in as an, enough of a different direction to make it new and interesting to me again. No, that's great. Okay, so I have to ask you about the professional explainer part. It's a great title. So I <laughs> What is that? What does it mean? What skills does it take? And, and, and kind of what fields does it lead to? Because we are you know we have an audience thinking, okay, maybe I'm good at that. What, what, how could I use it? What are the skills? Sure. Well, I think that it really comes down to about four key characteristics. Uh, first, a uh, professional explainer has to recognize that they need to demystify whatever it is they're trying to explain to someone else, whether that would be a technical concept or uh, how does an organization work. And you have to make sure you eliminate all the jargon out of your explanation as well. And then you need to develop and use tools that will make sense to the audience that you're working with. So if your audience is comfortable in listening to podcasts, they are people that are on the move and that's the best way for them to uh, receive knowledge, then you need to communicate knowledge in that fashion. If it's something that really requires a visual, maybe a video uh, or hands-on, then you need to make sure that you've tailored your tools to appeal to the audience and make it easy for them to get that information. And then you need to make sure that you solicit feedback from the audience as well so that you know that your tools are actually being well received and well understood. And the fourth and final characteristic is to remember that your objective is to make the audience feel comfortable with new knowledge. Mm. I'm sure that you can 
everyone has a situation where they came across someone who really knew what they were talking about, but didn't manage to put it in a comfortable or familiar way, and left people feeling more puzzled than, than confident in the knowledge that they had. So that's really what I would consider to be a professional explainer, and I think most people have that in some part of every job that they do, because at some point in time, you have to explain something of mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, to someone else, whether it's explaining how did you spend uh, the last two weeks to your boss, or um, how did you, uh, you know, convey a technical concept to a customer. Everyone has the ability to be a professional mm -hmm. explainer. But are there some job titles that if somebody knew they were good at telling stories or explaining things or simplifying things, it seems like a, a basic part of good communication to understand your audience and all that. But are there some job titles that are more like that? Like I was a technical writer at one point and I would consider that a piece of it. You're talking to somebody who knows scientifically like the, the, how the software works or, or hardware and you're trying to explain it to a different audience. Mm -hmm. So I would think technical writer would be one, but are there some other categories that people could look for because probably it's not going to say professional explainer in the <laughs> yes. monster or hot and dog. I have to say I haven't seen it on a lot, on a lot of resumes myself uh, but I think consultants are uh, big time they're professional explainers because they are oftentimes the intermediary between a technology or an application of a technology and the client that they're working with um, and vice versa they're explaining back to the uh, technology vendor here's what the client wants so I think consultants are often uh, professional explainers I think product managers are professional explainers they spend a lot of time explaining what their solutions or products will do to a, a variety of different audiences and of course, marketing. Marketing is yeah, a I was huge say one. Marketing. Mm -hmm. In terms of yeah. uh, the communication that has to be provided and to be able to understand what type of message you're trying to deliver to what type of audience and what tools you'll need to do that. I think it's still, it sounds like a basic part like of communication. Mm -hmm. Know who you're talking to and speak a language that they can understand. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. We'll talk about your book in a bit, but in, in a way your book is going in reverse because uh, when I coach people and they're in a new field, I say learn all the jargon, which is the opposite, so that you sound like you're in the field, mm -hmm. but you need a book like your book to understand what the jargon means, right? Exactly. And that's really one of the, the reasons that I wrote the book. Yeah. So um, let's go to, you've brought along a graphic here of uh, some tips. You made a major career transition and mm -hmm. some tips for others who are thinking of doing that. I thought I'd read the bullet points. We'll show it to the audience and you can comment on it. You can say, I never said that. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, career transition tips. Uh, the first thing you say is find a business sector that excites you. Tell us about that. Well, it, we spend a lot of time at work. So you might as well make it something that is exciting to you. And if it doesn't generate a downright passion in you, it should at least hold your interest for the eight hours to you know 12 hours in a day that you'll find yourself doing that so yeah why would anyone want to pick a career or a job that they absolutely hated that just makes life miserable so yeah. find something that interests you is got to be key yeah that uh, when when we're coaching people on career transitions what's one way to define ideal work is that you're interested in it that you have some skill for it and that you place value in it and mm -hmm. then of course there has to be a market for it but mm -hmm. in, in uh, smart grid I don't think we're too worried about that the next thing you say is immerse yourself in the uh, target business sector read everything you can including my book <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> your book. read my book yeah. um, and and of course that I think is is um, such common sense that uh, people need to do research into any career that they're looking at because you may initially think that um, you know, a nursing career might be fabulous for you but once you do a little research you realize that no it's not really what I want to do and and research can take many forms but it's so easy to find books to find periodicals to find industry magazines out there and the internet makes it especially easy to find everything in that subject matter that you can just accumulate information on your computer and spend entire days reading it all. 